decided I wanted an automatic antenna tracker system, I looked around and there was obviously my Fly Dream and the Skylark, which are the two uh, ready to go packages. You just stick it onto a tripod, t attach your antenna and your receiver, and off you go. And then at the other end of the market, there's the uh, Eagle Tree Eagle Eyes and the Easy Antenna from Immersion RC. Both of those sort of come in a kit form, and you need to build your own pan and tilt system, and then you have to add the telemetry, etc. etc. Uh, the Eagle Eye system was a bit of a strange one because the video feed carries the telemetry and you have to use the Eagle Tree OSD and I, I didn't want to do that, I wanted to keep my FY Hornet OSD. Um, so I went for the Immersion RC system mainly because of the, the cost saving and because I already got loads of Immersion products. I mean I use the Easy UHF, I use the video transmitters, the Duo receivers, various other bits and bobs. Um, so this is the Easy Antenna. This tiny bit here, that's all you get, is the board with the screen on. The rest of it, the, the pan and tilt, is all homemade. This is based on a half of a boss cam pan and tilt system, the pan part. And the top part here is the tilt system from a cheap eBay camera, mo uh, camera pan and tilt. And this, the aerial is obviously a Fat Shark Spyronet panel antenna. So if I power her up... Survey jitter there. The antenna tracker started, and this is the first screen you get. It's just a status overview, and you can scroll down to see Easy UHF link details. I'm not sending that back from my system because I don't have the Easy OSD, I'm just using Tiny Telemetry. Um, volts being drawn, current being drawn, total current drawn, so milliamps per hour. This is all available from the Tiny Telemetry or the Easy OSD if you've used the, the current board. And then we get some various information about tracking. We get the current packet success rate. So this is the data coming down the right audio channel from the tiny telemetry or the easy OSD. And then we get our audio levels. So I'm receiving static at the moment, so it's maxed out. Right, so we want to set this up. It's really easy. The instructions make it sound really complicated, but it is actually really, really easy. Push the middle button, ignore the first few options, scroll down until you see servo set. Right, set that to yes. Now the pan degrees and tilt degrees underneath, they both need to be set to zero. And to start with, it might be worth setting tilt max and pan max to 90 degrees. I just advise that just so you don't get stripped in your servos. Also, a lot of people run into the problem where they have the um, compass heading set on this device. Now the compass heading, I'm not sure if you can actually set it through this interface, but if you plug in your USB cable and use the immersion software, you can make sure that your heading is set to zero. Now the heading overrides where this antenna tracker thinks zero is. So you don't have to do the, the initial setup at the beginning where you put your plane next to your antenna tracker wait for it to get a GPS position, then you have to walk off 30 metres, put it down again and hit a button. It overrides all that, but it's a bit of a waste of time. So, I'll go back to where we were. Right, servo sets on. You set your pan to zero and your tilt to zero. So that means the easy antenna now assumes that your antenna is vertical that way and facing directly forwards. So you have to now play with your pan and tilt system to, to get that right. I'm assuming at this stage you've got everything plugged in. So you'll, you'll make sure your antenna, to, antenna is facing away from the tripod, or away from your ground station, and it is vertical. So the, the flat plate of the front of the antenna, or your, your helical, is going away, facing outwards towards the horizon. Once that's done, you can now go down in these settings, Sorry. Okay, back again. Once that's done, go to the pan degrees, click the middle button, and then push up until you get to 90 degrees. And at 90 degrees, ignoring the horrible, horrible servo wine, the antenna should be pointing 90 degrees. And mine's ever so slightly out because my servo travel isn't the best. But if it is out, when you set it to 90, You'll then click OK to confirm.
scroll down in the menu to the pan uh, nanoseconds per 360 degrees setting, which is saying how, how much space should be between the signal that's going to the servo per 360 degrees of re revolution. Now I've maxed both of my values out, but you'll probably find that yours will be something different. So you'll go up and down until you find that your antenna has actually rotated clockwise by 90 degrees. Okay, so we'll go back up, set this back to zero. So you should be in a position then where you've set that to 90 degrees, you've gone down to your servo timings and you've adjusted that so your antenna has gone from the zero degrees position and rotated clockwise to the 90 degrees position. And once you've set that, it will know that another 90 degrees will be 180 degrees, etc, etc. You should be fine. So now we'll check the tilt. So I'm going to tilt back to 90 degrees and that's good to me. I'll do the same thing then, I'll click OK again, click the middle button. You would notice the little chevron disappears and goes back to the left. And I'll go down and then you'll play with this value, the tilt nanoseconds per 360 degrees. Now I've maxed mine out again because these servos haven't got a lot of travel, I'm using micro servos. So once you've set that up, that's good. Your, your antenna will now know where 90 degrees back is and 90 degrees forwards is. Once you've set these two settings to give a perfect 90 degree angle, you need to then set the maximums and the minimums. Now you probably want to set them to, I don't know, 90 degrees or 180 degrees each way. Oops, sorry. Set them to 180 degrees each way and then manually, again, back in the pan degrees and tilt degrees setting, Manually then rotate your antenna to its full extent, and then you can monitor if you get any binding. So I'll turn mine all the way around, and you'll see it flicks when it gets to 180, and then continues its rotation. So I've maxed mine out at 180, so as soon as it hits 180, it'll go around the other way and start again. So you need to do the same. And once you've set everything, so once you've set your limits, so your tilt max and your pan max and your pan minimum and your tilt minimum, once you've got it all set up, you can then do a test. And this is where you find out if your servos are going to kill themselves. So, servo test, hit go. And if it's all moving freely, then you know you've done well. Bit of servo binding. So I'll go and set mine back to zero degrees. There we go. Also, if you find that you you can't quite align your servos or you can't quite align the gearing, so it's perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, they're giving you a lovely feature to trim it out. So we've got a pan offset and a tilt offset. So at the moment I can go into tilt offset and you see I can slightly adjust it by one degree at a time to get a perfectly vertical antenna. I've just noticed my pan's off slightly. So There we go, that'll do. And obviously you get the option to, if you need to be, so when you're rotating into a positive pan, so positive degrees pan, you should go clockwise. If you don't, there's an option to reverse the channel here. And the same with the tilt. When you're going positive, the antenna should tilt backwards, not forwards. So then you can adjust that. And that's pretty much it. That's how to set it up. The auto home function, I believe, is when your OSD gets a lock, it will automatically assume that the plane is sat next to the tripod and that's identified where the tripod is or where your ground station is, and that's your home point. Um, you've also got contrast. I'm not sure what the telemetry normal is. I haven't actually looked in the manual to see what that is yet. The servo speed on this firmware is a value from 1 to 30, 30 being the slowest, so you can slow down the... The, the speed that your antenna rotates. The one thing that doesn't affect is the speed of when it reverses. So if you hit 180 degrees and you're on the stop of your servo and it needs to move further, it will spin the other way full speed, which is 
pretty shocking when it does it. Uh, and then we can go all the way to the bottom of the menu, hit exit, back to the main screen to see our status overview, and then from here, if I hit the middle button again, I need to go all the way to the top of the menu. I probably could have gone down to be fair. Right, so once you're in the field, this is the easy bit, you would power up your plane, put it down on the floor next to the tripod, wait for your easy OSD or your tiny telemetry to get a GPS fix. Once it's got the fix, you'll push the set home button and that will decide that this is where the ground station is and it will show you just to check that your latitude and longitude is these positions, make sure that your altitude is zero, zero or at least near zero. Then you need to do the calibration, which we push the middle button again, we go down to calibration. This is where you pick your plane up and you'll walk away from the front of the antenna about 30 paces. Now you need to be dead in front of it. So if you could draw a line from the antenna straight outwards, that's where you want to be. Then you come back to your tripod or, or get someone you're with to push the centre button and then maybe you want to go and pick your plane up and just do a quick test, just do a quick walk around to make sure that it's going to follow you. But you need to do a big circle around the, the tracker for it to work. And that's all really. Hopefully I'll get a video soon of it all working properly. And I do need to tie in up my SMA connector because that's going to work itself loose. Thank you for watching. Hope it helps someone.